Hello, this is Mark Wildman with Wildman Athletica, and today we're going to talk about my personal program for June 2022. We really should have made one of these for May 2022 as well. I was traveling, so I got way off of my previous program design. When you travel, it tends to kick you off. I was supposed to be gone on a five-day trip. I ended up being gone for about four weeks. I only took my hydro core with me, and I got my hands on a 25-pound mace, and then I went to Gambate Fitness in LA. We'll talk about what that program was and how it is feeding into this new program design. When I was in LA, I had access to double 24K competition bells at Combate Fitness and double 28s. I didn't have any other kettlebell pairs, so I started changing my program into a heavy light cycle with those weights. That's way different than what I had done before. Previous to that, I had been working with light 20, heavy 24. So this was a pretty big jump and it necessitated a pretty big change in design program overall. Double DBL, long cycle, clean and jerk. It's different from Olympic lifting where you would do something like a split jerk for you know one rep max. Here we're working on building up volume because kettlebells simply can't be controlled in the same way. Kettlebells are for intermediate weights in intermediate periods of time. So with this program design here, we are working on building up volume. When I was in LA, I started with the 224s and I started with 10 sets of 10 reps and I did those 10 reps inside of three minutes. So think of that as an originally a 30 minute block of training. That's a lot of rest time and that's good because I wanted to alternate it with this double heavy day because that's the weights I had access to. In a three minute round, 10 reps takes about one minute. So you end up with two minutes to stand around and focus on your breathing. That is a long rest period for somebody who is doing a competition kettlebell lift. And that is because I have one very bad left leg. So I'm constantly checking in when I make big jumps in program about whether my technique is good enough for my leg to survive. On the other day, I was doing double 28s, which was very heavy for me because I haven't done double 28s in about a year and I was doing sets of five inside of three minutes. So five reps takes about 30 seconds. That gives me about two minutes and 30 seconds to stand around, starting with a 30 minute workout. I want a lot of time to stand around because I'm turning this into pure strength training, not for my heart, not for my upper body, but specifically for my previously injured knee. With this program, I started just adding volume to it. The first week was 10 sets of 10 for workout one, and then 10 sets of five, and then the next week was 12 sets of 10, 12 sets of five, then it went to 14 sets, then it went to 14 sets, then it went to 16 sets, then it went to 16 sets. That was the entire month I was in Los Angeles. That was four weeks. So the workouts I'm going to be doing now will be 18 sets of five and 18 sets of 10. And that is now a very, very long workout. That's what, 54 minutes, 54 minutes. And then the workout after this will be 20 sets of five and 20 sets of 10. And then we will alter the weight and we will take it up to double 25 Ks and double 29 Ks and start the idea over again. We can jump to double 29s and double 25s, which are not common weights because we are going to be using the Kettlebell Kings adjustable competition kettlebells where we can micro load the weights, or we'll be using the Bells of Steel double competition adjustable kettlebells, which I am trying out and testing out. Both of them seem to be nearly identical and they both allow you to do the small, small jump in weight. And then we're gonna repeat the idea over again. That is a built in low cycle. So when we get to our 20 sets of five, which is an hour for each one of these things, and we jump up in weight, we're gonna cut the volume all the way in half and that is a built-in low phase of training, which allows us to take a break for a little bit of time. We cannot always go up in a perfect progression straight up linearly. You will eventually break down. You have to have built-in breaks in your training. Those are two of the days a week. Think of this as A, B, C, A, B, C. Six days a week of training, taking Sunday off because we should probably take one day off. We should force ourselves to take one day off a week. Double long cycle in the morning. Then the second day is single arm kettlebell 
Time under tension protocol, don't set the weight down for 30 minutes. I did it the other day with 16. We'll use our adjustable competition kettlebell. Next time we'll do 17, then we'll do 18. Then we're just gonna walk this up each time. This is meant to be a generally easy day after this, which is a very, very hard day on my injured leg. After that, we're going into our single arm club. Heavy, light, heavy. 40 pound single arm progression, inside circle, outside circle, shield cast, and that's a volume cycle set at sets of three. We're only doing three reps because that is very, very, very heavy for single arm. I used to do up to single arm 50, but if you haven't done it in a long time, that gets real heavy. I find that about 60% of your max previous weight is what you can hold on consistently. So I have maxed out at single arm 50 pound club. My arms got extremely large for a little while. So I can maintain single arm 30 for a long period of time, which is pretty good by itself. But we're trying to build that back up. It's summer, let's make the arms pop a little bit. I like to do heavy single arm club in the summer. I just like it, you can go outside. And every time I work on my single arm club progression, it is a check-in for my knee, which is getting a lot of work over here. People think single arm club is just arm work. It is not, it is total body. Anything above about single arm 25 pounds for men becomes total body integration and it starts with the legs and it ends with the legs. You do not move your feet when the weight is this heavy. You move everything else. If you move your feet, one side could move differently than the other and you will end up messing yourself up. So feet planted, single arm, inside circle, outside circle, shield cast with sets of three and it's a volume cycle. Before my trip, about 16 sets of three with this idea. I am dropping it back down because I took four weeks off and we're going back down to eight sets of three and then it will be nine sets of three, 10 sets of three, 11 sets of three. We're gonna build up to 20 sets of three and then this will jump to sets of four and it will start back over at either six or eight sets. We don't know until that day how that's gonna go. A, B, C, heavy, A, B, C, light, heavy, light, light, heavy, heavy, light. It's a built-in wave, always. We're always waving back and forth between a heavy day and a light day. Our light double long cycle will be double 24K. The next workout is 18 sets of 10 reps inside of three minutes. That will be 54 total minutes. The workout after that will be 20 sets of 10. Then this one will jump to double 25 Ks, micro loaded adjustable competition bells, and it'll start back over at that 10 sets of 10. Then we have our strong and fit mill squat program. This is always a check-in program for me. This is the hard part of the program. This is easy, this is a check-in. This is a check-in for the legs and rebuilding movement patterns that might be off because of this. The strong and fit mill squat program We'll be doing 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, time under tension protocol. It is a 20 minute program, four rounds of five exercises, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, five exercises, five minutes, four rounds, 20 total minutes. And we will be working with either the 50 or the 55, depending on how we feel that day. And then of course, single arm club again, opposite of this heavy day, the 40 pound single arm, 35 pound single arm club, sets of five, starting over at eight sets of five and building our volume cycle up to 20 sets of five. And then this day will go back to being just double 40s. We'll see how that goes. All of this stuff here, A, B, C, A, B, C, this is all the morning training stuff. At night, we're gonna throw in some fun workouts just for fun to be outside. This was something I started doing in LA. At Gambate Fitness, they have absolutely great, you know, rogue monster racks that are very high and they have good dip stations. So I started doing, I started at 10 sets of eight dip station and I started building it up and I got to 16 sets of eight. I don't have a dip station here, but I have ordered one. It should be here in two days and then we're gonna get back on dips twice a week. We're gonna put the dips inside of three minutes again. I'm trying not to push it super hard heart rate wise right now 
because I have a lot of other stuff to deal with. And so if you have a lot of other stressors in your life, then I'm gonna pull down the stress in the workouts and give myself a little bit more time to breathe. So do eight dips and then do a set of 20 of abs. And we're gonna build that up. And that's gonna become an hour long once it gets to 20 sets. And then it will start over at 10 sets and go to 10 sets of nine. And the abs will stay the same. The abs are just there to kill time and have fun. Nothing important to be done there. That one for me is just purely entertainment. Dips and abs for me, just entertainment. They're both straight line activities and they don't have ground reaction force. So it's just fun. It's an excuse to go out and hang out by the horse pasture and do dips in the tall grass. It'll be fun. The other evening workouts is gonna be body weight 101. This is another time under tension protocol. There are eight exercises in this protocol, four rounds is 32 total minutes. We're gonna do 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off for this month. And then it will evolve into a Tabata program, 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of break, eight total rounds for one movement, a one minute break, which is five minutes. And then that's gonna end up being a 40 minute program next month. The other alternating day for body weight is our Krav One program. Neither one of these programs are out right now. We're gonna have this one all uploaded and ready to go on Friday of this week. The goal of these body weight programs is just to make sure that you're checking in with your ability to get up off of the ground, which is a basic human athletic skill, which is not often trained. So the morning training, six days a week, heavy, light, heavy, light, heavy, light, Sunday off, and then evening workouts, abs and dips, just for fun, two days a week, wherever they can get shoved in on non-consecutive days. And then body weight 101, working on the basics of getting up off the ground and some hip movement. And then Krav 1 will be a specific type of get up to fight training. There are many ways to get up off the ground. I tend to lead people and myself towards get-ups that I find to be useful in some way. I'm too old to practice skills that aren't useful anymore, so I pick a bunch of different versions of get-ups from different types of martial arts. We turn them into trackable time under tension programs, and they don't require anything except the ground, which you definitely have if you live on Earth. Standing up, standing up, not putting a weight down for long periods of time, working on our rotation inside, outside, and shield cast, standing all the way up, putting weights all the way up overhead, double lockout. These are big extensions of the spine. These are rotations of the spine. This is nonstop spine, and this is double two-hand rotation of the spine. So there's no way out of this. So there's a lot of things in here that are all trying to balance each other out, but think the core of this program is the double long cycle, and everything else here is meant to support the double long cycle. It's a fun program. You can get away with doing almost anything twice a week. Twice a week, once a week, once a week, twice a week, twice a week, twice a week for body weight, and we'll throw in some mountain biking and some dirt biking in there around all of that other stuff. The whole point of the nerd math Tetris of training strategy is that they will slide around each other if you fall off a schedule. It doesn't have to be perfect. Things can shift a day forward. They can shift a day back. I have some motorcycle trips coming up and the whole thing will just stop. And then we'll just go back to alternating back and forth between body weight programs. And then when we get back from a couple of days on the road, we will just pick up with wherever we left off in the morning cycle of training. The point of all of the training you do is not just to look good, it's to be in shape to go do whatever you want to do in your life. We define adventuring very simply as going places you've never gone, talking to people you've never talked to, and doing things you've never done. For me, in the summer, that's either could be mountain biking, horseback riding, or motorcycling, and all you have to do is pick a road you've never gone down before and go down that road.